Good morning. Welcome to worship. Thank you, Paul. What a beautiful prelude this morning. We had Bunko last night, and it was a blast. Yeah. Um, I was deep in the hole, but the Lord pulled me out, and I ended at 500. So I feel good about that. I was just tanking it, and then something happened, and my luck turned around. So thank you to all those who coordinated that, the Time Talent Treasure Committee, as well as those who came last night. Really fun night. A couple other things coming up this month. Tomorrow, we are serving the banquet. The banquet is a feeding ministry in Sioux Falls. has a couple locations. We're serving at the downtown location. So it starts at 2, and then there's two shifts. We need probably four to six more people for the second shift, the latter shift, the 5.15 to 8 o'clock. So if you're interested, you can contact the church office by about 9 or 10 tomorrow morning so we can get the list to them. But we're doing really good. Sign up has been really strong with that, and it's important, as you all know, as we follow Jesus to serve with our lives, and, and that's a great opportunity to serve at the banquet. We have a number of musical pieces coming up this month, which is pretty exciting. We have uh, ukuleles coming to church on the 21st of this month. So Augustana University has a ukulele club. I know that there's a president of a ukulele club and a constitution, (laughs) which is pretty funny. Uh, So they're going to come play a couple songs on the 21st during worship. The 24th, that Wednesday of that week, we have... Fourth through sixth graders have started doing the handbells again, uh, led by Erica, one of our members, which has been really, really fun. So they're gonna, they have a goal of trying to do a song on that Wednesday, the 24th, during worship. And then on the 28th, we have another group coming, the Augustana University Trombone Choir, as well as the, our own choir are singing. So a lot of music on the 28th, the last Sunday of this month. Trombone Choir is maybe my favorite group. You don't tell that to other people (laughs) at Augustana. They're a really phenomenal group, led by a guy named Matt Erickson, who was, Paul was Matt's boss in the Air Force, so a really cool connection there, too. So I talked to Matt this week, and they're anticipating 18 trombones. So it's, and they're gonna be in from the balcony. It's gonna be awesome. You will not wanna miss that day, as well as the choir singing, too. So that's the 28th. Uh, one last thing with Augustana. If you know of any juniors, junior, high school juniors, interested in think, uh, thinking about college and possibly a small liberal arts college, Augustana has a couple junior visit days this month. So one is this coming Friday, and then one is the 26th of this month, too. So a great way. There's a, there's a great new scholarship for ELCA members to go to Augustana that's up to $12,000 a year. So there's, there's resources there for kids from our church. Uh, it's Easter, still Easter season. It's not just a one-day event, but you're also welcome to take some of the flowers as they dissipate a bit. You're welcome to take them home and give them some care to do that. Um, and she won't like this, but it was Linda's birthday this week <laughs> uh, on Wednesday, and we should sing happy birthday to Linda. Happy birthday. Okay, I'm going to teach you a new song that we'll do later in the service, after the sermon. But if you want to take your hymnals out, those red hymnals that we use from time to time, number 375. We got sound, Linda, for a guitar. This is a great uh, Easter song that comes to us from Latin America. So I'm going to teach you the chorus in Spanish. So buckle up. 
That's great. It's one of my favorite songs. So why don't you repeat after me for the Spanish? Alleluia. You're bilingual. Just kidding. Cristo resucito. Cristo resucito. De ma drugada. De ma drugada. El domingo. El domingo. So I'll teach you the chorus here so you can be ready. Let me sing it later. So just listen first. Alleluia Cristo resucito. De madrugada el domingo. Listen again. Alleluia Cristo resucito. De madrugada el domingo. So I'm going to sing a line, a little piece, we'll chunk it out. So listen first. Alleluia. Try that. Alleluia Cristo resucito. Cristo resucito, de madrugada, de madrugada, el domingo, el domingo. There's a lot of big jumps, and I know it's kind of early, but I have faith in the Lord and faith in you. So listen, listen when I'll sing it once through, and then I'll have you join the second time. Alleluia Cristo resucito De madrugada el domingo Try that Alleluia Cristo resucito De madrugada el domingo One more time, let's sing it one more time Alleluia Cristo resucito De madrugada el domingo. Good job. So you'll be ready a little later. I'll invite Grace in now. And you can stand as you're able. Go back to the beginning here. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, the wellspring of grace, our Easter and our joy. You can say amen. Amen. Immersed in the promises of baptism, let us give thanks for what God has done for us. We give you thanks, O God, for in the beginning your voice thundered over the deep and water became the essence of life. Adam and Eve beheld Eden's rivers. The ark carried your creation through the flood into a new day. Miriam led the dancing as your people passed through the sea into freedom's land. In a desert pool, the Ethiopian official entered your boundless baptismal life. Look, here is the water of life. Alleluia. At the river, your son Jesus was baptized by John and anointed with the Holy Spirit. By the baptism of Jesus' death and resurrection, you opened the floodgates of your reconciling love, freeing us to live as Easter people. We rejoice with glad hearts through the risen Christ in the unity of the Holy Spirit now and forever. Here is the water of life. Amen. Alleluia. We sing together.
let us pray. Almighty God, with joy, we celebrate the day of the Lord's resurrection. By the grace of Christ among us, enable us to show the power of the resurrection in all that we say and do. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated for the readings. The first reading is Psalm 133. Please read the bolded words. How good and how pleasant it is when kindred live together in unity. It is like the dew of Hermon flowing down upon the hills of Zion. The second reading is from the book of Acts, chapter 4. Now the whole group of those who believed were of one heart and soul, and no one claimed private ownership of any possessions, but everything they owned and held in common. With great power, the apostles gave their testimony to the resurrection and the Lord Jesus, and great grace was upon them all. There was not a needy person among them, for as many as owned lands or houses sold them and brought them the proceeds of what was sold. They laid it at the apostles' feet, and it was distributed to each of us, each as had any need. Word of God, word of life. Please rise for the reading of the Gospel. The Gospel today on the second Sunday of Easter is from John chapter 20. When it was evening on that day, the first day of the week, the doors of the house where the disciples had met were locked for fear of the Jewish leaders. Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them, again, peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. When he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. But Thomas, who was called the twin, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, We have seen the Lord. But Thomas said to them, Unless I see the mark of the nails on his hands, and put my finger in the mark of the nails and my hand in his side, I will not believe. A week later, his disciples were again in the house, and Thomas was with them. Although the doors were shut, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands. Reach out your hand and put it in my side. Do not doubt, but believe. Thomas answered him, My Lord and my God, Jesus said to him, Have you believed because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have come to believe. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples which are not written in this book, but these are written so that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that through believing you may have life in his name. The Gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, Christ. Please be seated. There's a couple of kids. Do the children want to come? Okay, Grayson's coming. Oh, yeah, a few. 
Hey, crew. You can, you can stay standing for this. I gotta wait. That's your necklace. Oh. A whale. That's great. Hey, good morning. Were you three here last week? I think you were for Easter Sunday. So we're going to do... So I mentioned before, we sometimes think of Easter as a one-day event, but it really is a whole season. 50 days long is the Easter season. So this is the second Sunday of Easter, uh, which is really cool. So we can continue. So what we're going to do is we're going to continue what we've done before, mainly because the older people, the wiser, good-looking people out there, uh, they kind of got into it. <laughs> so I'm going to keep it going. So you want, I only have two of the hand clappers. Those were a big hit last week. So whenever we say the word Alleluia, you can do this, or the, we had a bell, or little mini pom-poms. What do you, what do you want this week? The bell? And don't let your dad take it from you. <laughs> I can see his, what, do you want one? Which one do you want? The bell? Hands. Which, what do you want? Pom-pom? Great. Good Friday. And all of us, like we did last week, really got into it. Is the, so sign language, American sign language for clapping is the waving of the hands. So let's try that. Lift your hands as you're able. Wave them. Good job. So whenever we say the word alleluia, you can do, you can wave your thing, you can ring your bell, and clap your little mini hands, and you can do, good job. They're coming along. So Easter keeps coming along. It's 50 days long. Uh, and we celebrate it really every Sunday. So thanks for coming up. Alleluia. There you go. Well, grace and peace to you on this Easter Sunday number two. Anyone who has been around siblings, whether they're your own children or family members or friends or however you have seen siblings, you realize they are not the same people. <laughs> it's about as clear a thing as you don't have to be a child psychologist to know that if you have two children, they're going to be really different in certain ways. My two best friends growing up in especially high school were twins, two boys, and Lord knows they were not the same person. And they would fight about it, too, as, as sometimes can happen, too. Even though, you know, those two, even though they shared the same womb at this exact same time, they were not the same person. We all, again, not rocket science here, we all develop at different stages in our ways, our paces, different styles of who we are. And development of people, although there are key milestones that we have that we want to recognize and that are important, we also know development is not linear, and it is not the same for every person, and the destination is not the same for every person either. And that's good that we have come, I think we've come, made some progress to realize that about people that why, why should we be, expect people to arrive at the same destination? We are different people. And then, I, you know, I wonder sometimes, too, why, why do we make, I think we make faith a bit too much linear, too linear as well. We make faith a bit too cookie cutter. You don't need a high level of awareness to realize that each of our faith journeys is different. There are similarities, especially from a similar community, for sure. But it is not the same. We are day in, day out, different people. We have different wonderments. We have different times of boldness, different times of searching, different times of confidence, different times of disillusionment, and yes, even different times of doubt. I think for me, you know, serving as a pastor, I see it clearly in confirmation, the confirmation program, and you probably do too. Confirmation has changed a lot since, you know, decades ago. My dad tells me probably too many times as a kid, some of those stories come up too often. 
uh, about his own confirmation. He, he went away for high school, for part of his high schooling. Uh, so he was confirmed on his confirmation Sunday by himself. He was, grew up at First Lutheran in Sioux Falls, so this big church of the 1960s era. And he was up front alone. And it was the era, as some of you can remember, where you were quizzed. <laughs> you were asked these questions. They had prepared you somewhat, but you didn't know exactly what they were going to ask. And I'm, that's one of the things I'm glad we've gone away from that <laughs> a bit because it's very scary. But it also, I think something that has evolved that is good is, we've, for confirmation, we've gone a bit away from just rote memory and tried to be, and not that it's a perfect or exact science in any way, tried to engage faith in a way that recognizes that we are different. And that, you know, when you sit with a group of 7th and 8th graders, you know that they're on very different, <laughs> different journeys and at different stages. A mentor of mine said once, a confirmation, but it can be true in, in anything in all of life, we should strive more to answer the questions that people are actually asking. And I've never forgotten that, especially in confirmation. I try to work into the program here, times when they can write questions on pieces of paper in the sermon notes that we have, there's times for, for them to ask questions. I try to incorporate some of that to get to that, that maybe we're not always connecting with people in the, in the ways that they're asking the right, the, the questions that they're actually asking. Because we realize something that comes up in this passage, I think, from John 20, is that the, so this is the risen Jesus. Jesus has died and has risen from the dead. And these are the first appearances in John's gospel. And what we see, Fred Craddock is a theologian. He's deceased now. But he, he really helped me to see Jesus, the risen Jesus, appears in different ways to those first four groups or individuals. He says the beloved disciple, who is nameless in John's gospel often, he believes without evidence except the empty tomb. And then Mary Magdalene in John's gospel is the next one that she believes from a word. The disciples, this first group that we hear in this passage today, when Thomas is not with them, they believe because they saw him, they saw Jesus. And then for Thomas, the absent Thomas, who then becomes the present Thomas, neither word of witness nor sight of Jesus would be sufficient. His faith wanted physical contact. Craddock says, what is clear is that faith is not for all the same experience. Neither is it generated for all with the same kind and degree of evidence. In our hearts, we know this is true, and you don't have to live in, I mean, you can be in any family and realize that it is, it is different for each person. There are similarities in the faith journey, as people in this room can attest, but there are these differences. When we think of ourselves we, and our friends, our close people that we're connected with, some faith is born and grows in a quiet manner. Craddock has a line so like, like one laying on the grandmother's lap. I love that imagery of faith. For others, it's more like a wrestling match, which relates to the Canton community pretty well. And it invokes that story from Genesis where Jacob wrestles this angelic being at Peniel. It's a great story. So for some, that, that's more akin to, to faith. And then there's others of us that simply cannot remember a time when we didn't believe and others of us I feel like we always just barely believe. And maybe countless times uh, venturing seemingly in and out, close and then distant. What is of great importance, not, not one of those first four experiences in John chapter 20 of the risen Christ, not one became the norm. Not, one, not once did Jesus say, this is how you have to walk your road. Jesus chose 
to come to these different people, these first disciples, in different ways. And yet it was still Jesus, the Christ, this risen Messiah, that we can somehow believe still that Christ is risen. Hey, great job. Someone's awake. As we gather in community for worship and meet and study and prayer and gather for fellowship and bunko, we venture into our daily lives. May we carry those words that Christ is risen, Christ is risen indeed. May we carry those with us. And sometimes, hopefully more than just a couple times, we can feel the call to remind others that death doesn't have the last word. That the constant in those four first times that Jesus, the risen Jesus comes is that's the reminder that he is not dead. <laughs> that he has raised from the dead. And we're called to remind people of that. Whether it's in word, hopefully sometimes in word, or presence, or whatever way we can do it. I thought of my grandpa this week, and some of you, it's fun, some, there's a few people in this church that actually know him, remember him. He was a pastor, a Lutheran pastor, served in a couple ELC churches, one in Oldham and one at Brandon Lutheran. I thought of him this week because it was his birthday, Linda, and my grandpa shared a birthday. He was deceased, died uh, about 10 years ago. But there's stories about him. He was a very gregarious individual. He was wild. There's stories of him trimming hedges, holding a lawnmower to use uh, motorized. <laughs> That's one of the, there's a lot of those. He, uh, he had a lot of stories of that. He was one who he just could not sit still. And I still to this day wonder how did he make it through seminary studies because he was, he was an action guy. He did not have time to dawdle around. His visits were short. He drove fast. People would say they'd see him on the country roads miles in the distance. Uh, he was an action guy and a really good pastor to a mentor to me in faith. He commonly quoted the Bible. He knew the Bible very thoroughly, and he was deeply Lutheran, so would quote Lutheran theology as well. person of deep faith. And I'll share more of him in the future, I'm sure. But I heard a story about him just this last week from a family member of mine that I'd never heard before that show, gave me a different glimpse into who he was. This family member and my grandpa were at a, a church gathering. It was a national ELCA church gathering. This is maybe, maybe 25 years ago. And it, for some reason, at that particular moment in the gathering, it was just the two of them sitting together in a church space, I think in the Twin Cities. So they were just one-on-one, -on -one. and he was action dude, so sat, stood, moved around a lot. But something happened that he, he noticed. He said something about my aunt and asked her, how, how are you doing? And she told him the news that she had just had a, a miscarriage just the, the week before. My uncle at that time was, they were young and, and he was in the early stages of his career, which required him to travel a lot. So he had just left the day before for England. So she felt very alone. And this active, overly active grandpa of mine who moved around way too much, had the sense to pick up that something was different that day. He did not choose to just quote scripture at her or to her. He simply listened and sat with her and said just the simple words of, I'm so, I'm so sorry that you are going through this. Just sat with her. I thought today, that is the risen Christ. Not just him, but in the midst of the where two or three are gathered, we hear that. That Christ is the one who plunges to the depth of our sorrow and also invites us to do that for others and with others. That we are called to bring a word 
Sometimes it's very simple, a simple word. Sometimes it's to be a presence, to share these reminders of the Easter message that is not just a single day, but it is a way of life, that Christ is raised from the dead, and we don't have to stay dead, and yet we're called to be with those who experience it, to sit in a pew beside someone, to witness to them, to hear it, to experience it, that Christ is alive, and so too are we. So too are we. That Christ is raised from the dead for each of you, for all of us, for the entire world. Amen. Ready? Why don't you stand up as you're able? I'll sing the verses just by myself if you feel led to join me. We'll do those in English, uh, but we'll do the chorus in Spanish. And each time we do the chorus, we'll repeat it. We'll do it twice each time. Why don't you listen to me sing it once through by myself? Just get it in your ear again. Alleluia, Cristo resuscitó. De madrugada, el domingo. Join in. Alleluia, Cristo resuscitó. De madrugada, el domingo. Yep, I noticed over here. The word Alleluia came up. I know you're learning Spanish, but if you can ride bike and chew gum at the same time, <laughs> or whatever, uh, you can wave your hands when that word comes up. Run faithful women to the graveside. Marvel, the stone is rolled away. Hear from the angel, he is risen. Christ goes before you all the way. The chorus. Alleluia, Cristo resuscitó. De madrugada, el domingo. Alleluia, Cristo resuscitó. De madrugada el domingo. Rise, Magdalena, from your weeping. Christ stands before your very eyes. Quickly return to the disciples. Bear the good news, he is alive. Alleluia, Cristo resuscitó. De madrugada el domingo. Alleluia, Cristo resuscitó. De madrugada el domingo. Gather disciples in the evening. Suddenly Christ your Lord appears. Look, it is I, your wounded Savior. Peace be with you and do not fear. Alleluia, Cristo resuscitó. De madrugada el domingo. Alleluia, Cristo resuscitó. De madrugada el domingo. 
Thomas, where were you on that evening? I'll not believe unless I see. Christ comes again in every Lord's day. Touch me and see, have faith in me. Alleluia! Alleluia, Christo resuscito. De madrugada, el domingo. Alleluia, Christo resuscito. De madrugada, el domingo. Rejoicing that Jesus is risen and love has triumphed over fear, let us pray for the church, the world, and all those in need of good news. Your church cries out, O oh God, and you listen. As you drew near to the disciples, draw near to us this day. Breathe on us your Holy Spirit, that our faith is renewed and we witness to your love. Bless our congregation, Canton Lutheran Church, as well as the South Dakota Synod, the ELCA, and the wider Christian church throughout the world. God of grace. Your creation cries out, O God, and you listen. Nurture trees, crops, wildfire, flowers, and all growing things. Guide farmers, ranchers, gardeners, arborists, and all who tend the soil and nurture plants into life. God of grace. Amen. Your world cries out, O God, and you listen. Guide police, firefighters, paramedics, all first responders, and our nation's military to work for the well-being of communities and the dignity of every person that no one may need to live in fear. God of grace. Amen. Your children cry out, O God, and you listen. Hear your people crying out for justice and for a world where all are fed and safe. We pray for all who cry out in suffering or pain, especially Dan March, Mike Hoffman, Steve Monin, Arlene Markle, Alan Hammerstrom, Ray Harris, Davin Richardson, Vicki Hoekstra, Judy Stearns, Alan Kroger, Rudy Jerky, Justin Knudsen, Charles, Panetta, Nick, Chris, Jared, Jordan, and Lance. God of grace. Your congregation cry out, O oh God, and you listen. Renew all church workers and volunteers who facilitated Holy Week and Easter worship services. Open our hearts to discern where God calls each of us to serve. God of grace. Accept our gratitude, O God, for the lives of those who now rest in you, including Orville Amundsen and Babe Miller. Grant us your peace amid our fears. God of grace. Into your hands, most merciful God, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your abiding love through Jesus Christ, our resurrected and living Lord. Amen. The peace of the Lord be the peace of the Lord be with you all. Let's share God's peace with our neighbors.
offering. Please rise as you're able. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, gave it to his disciples, and said, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. And again, after supper, he took the cup, he gave thanks, and he gave it to all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people, for the forgiveness of sin. Do this, for the remembrance of me. Gather together, let us pray in the words Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. You may be seated. All are welcome at the communion table. This is Christ's table that's open for you and for all. We serve by receiving a piece of bread, eat the piece of bread. Uh, take a cup, the wine is the darker colored, the apple juice is the lighter colored. There's gluten-free wafers if you need or choose that. Or if you'd like to come forward to simply receive a blessing, you can fold your arms in front of your chest for a blessing. But know that all are welcome to come to receive. There'll be a station here at the rail and also one on the floor.
May the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in God's grace. Amen. Well, thanks again for coming uh, this morning. Reminder, if you have an opportunity and are able to serve at the banquet tomorrow night, you can contact their office to serve that at the 515 to 8 o'clock slot. I'll invite you to rise. Alleluia. Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia. The God of resurrection power, the Christ of unending joy, and the spirit of Easter hope, bless you now and forever. Amen. Hallelujah! Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Hallelujah! Go in peace. Serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Mm-hmm.